I'm on my way to look at a job for one of our clients in Ashington. It's an extension. We've already priced this. I'm going to talk about the job and how we're going to be running it, what the phases of the job is going to be. The job is to build an extension on top of a garage. It's going to be a garage door which needs to be bricked up. That garage door can be bricked up first. Their company takes the roof off and strips the uh, brickwork in the garage peak when, while they strip that back and the scaffold goes up ready for us to jump in there and start taking the extension up to wall plate. Good morning. It's Monday morning. Me and Keegan, we're in the van. We are on route to our new site for Dave Nicholas Construction. This is Nick, the gaffer. Phase one of this job is bricking up this garage door opening here. What we're going to be doing, cutting out these halves here so we can tool our new brick in. There will be a bit of new brickwork here and here, still height here, and we're going to have a window in here. We've got the concrete lintels in here, we're just going to build up off these. I'm going to move this lintel back a bit so we can create more of a cavity. That is pretty much it for that, isn't it, Nick? Do you see? It is. It is. Phase one brickwork. So phase one, phase two is upstairs. Shall we go upstairs and have a quick look? How are you? Let's go. Right, so this is phase two. So we're going to be starting straight after this garage door opening. So I believe Nick and the team are going to be coming here doing what they need to do over there, putting the new floor joists on which are going to sit on top of this steel work here, which they have already put in. We'll then beam fill in between this, sort out this bit brickwork there. We're going to put one course of bricks over here, uh, one course of blocks over there to start our ties. We'll then come over on top of the steel. We'll have to build this up in block work. And the same as downstairs, we're going to take out the halves on the house so we can build into there. Right, so there's a bit detail over here. <coughs> it's a bit squeaky, that scaffold, isn't it? So this soldier course comes right through the house. There's going to be a window in here. So we'll get up to our sill height. We'll have to leave off on the top of the soldier because we've got a special soldier course going in. We'll build up, set our windows out. We don't need to do it into the back though because this building is set back somewhere under this tarpaulin, set back to around here. So we'll have a vertical dam in here. Start a bar up against the existing house, which will tie our new brickwork to the house. We've got building inspector here on site. So Nick's just went over. He's dealing with the building inspector at the minute. We'll crack on down below. We're going to discuss how to do then and what work we're going to be doing. Right, we'll go and find Nick. We'll have a bit chat and we'll crack on. Right. Whew. Get these off. Oh my God. Oh. That's the fans being killing us there. That was horrible, that. Um, is this turned on? Yes. That was horrible. So still so is crap. I established that after 20 minutes of trying to start the thing. It's rubbish. So we have been cutting out the toothings and cutting a vertical damp. We're going to have 70 mil cavity here. Block work. It's going to be insulated, insulated on the inside and whatever they're doing. I'm going to take these out now, these halves, very, very carefully. And the same on this side here. We had to alter the concrete lintels. Um, the bed on top of this lintel here was going to be too big, um, which is fine if you're going to lay it and then leave it. But we're not, we're going to build straight off. So. Well, I lift the lintels up a bit, pack them up, point it up, and set the size for the cavity. So now, because I'm very, very anxious of the time, I'm going to get these out and just get the brickwork in. Get the brickwork in. I'll forget about the blockwork for now in case we run out of time. And then at least this window opening can be boarded off overnight. So I'm going to get cracking. Right, so what we're doing here, we've cut out every bed joint down here so we can take these halves out. Then what we want to do, we want to make sure when we're taking these that we don't crack any brickwork behind it or crack the half here. Because we've got nothing 
under there now because we've cut that bed joint so if we start hitting this this is vulnerable to snap we don't want that to snap because if that snaps we've then got to go take out more brickwork for one we don't want to do that for two it looks bad you know you you can tell when the new brick works in so what i like to do is i'll get the still saw i'll just go over with the drill i'll put a few in on the perps makes it a little bit looser we'll just tap the brick have a little try so give it a, a tap these are just going to fall, up, fall apart and you see we've not when that came out we haven't taken any of that brick any of that or any of that brick away and then what we'll do with this bit because the saw doesn't get right to the back we'll just go with a chisel and it's not going <coughs> to it could still smash this brick but we're going to come in from this side with the chisel if we come in this side when we're hitting that now all of our force is going against this brick which is still solid mortar solid there we've never touched that so always this way don't go this way that isn't happening change this to a different piece you have a real nice look in there here and you can show we haven't damaged any of these faces on the brickwork you want to make sure that the top the brick has no mortar on because when we come in with our new brick we want it to come just nicely in and we can stem in our new mortar up there so that's how it works anyway and it's going to look something like this which we've already done steelwork here that I've put in we need a cavity tray on top of here <clears throat> any steelwork down there if any water comes down this cavity and there's not a cavity tray in, it's just going to drop inside of the new building which is no good so we put this cavity tray in it sits on top of our block work comes down and we are going to bed this on so we'll add that in the next part of the video but this will get bedded on and then we'll lay our coarser bricks on top and then rake out the bed joint this wants to sit higher than the lead work so this is the roof down below the lead work's going to come up it's going to stand up 150 and then it wants to be tucked underneath the lead work there so if we see our, our trowel here is the lead wants to sit underneath the cavity tray there's black plastic wants to sit underneath there so this is hard to hold like this <laughs> right so lead work cavity tray any water that comes down comes onto the tray and out the weep holes these ripples which i'll show you it's going to come out on top of the lead down the face of the lead and then onto the roof however if you don't bed that down and you just put your damp straight on 
lay a course of bricks and don't rake out the bed joint and the roofer comes and grinds it out he's going to grind away some of the bed joint the air uh, cavity tray it's going to ruin the tray and it's probably not going to work so all of the time bed the tray on so the roofer makes his life a lot easier so slides it straight in your lead made it up he water straight onto the lead and then out the other scenario is roofer could put the lead work on top of the tray so you're going to have that gap between the tray and the lead work so any water could still come down onto the tray and if the lead works higher than the damp water will just come down underneath the lead down the face of the brick and inside the building which is not what we want another good point to mention is insulation wants to be behind your cavity tray our bed's laid now what we need to do is just flatten out our cavity tray all of the way along bear in mind what i've just said the roofer needs to get lead underneath here let's see what we can do here push your tray right down so weefles go every 450 get a better way weefle goes in one brick There we pull, clean it off, we pull goes in, move the muck back, get the we pull down, sometimes I'll stick them past the face of the brickwork, then I'll stick them in half, and I'll push them back in afterwards. This muck now is nice and stiff, so what we want to do, just go along, raking the joint out. I do have a chariot somewhere for raking out, but I can't find it, so I'm just using a screwdriver. So you can see there, that is our cavity tree there. So now we rake this joint out and saves the roof off from wrecking it with a um, grinder. So his lead now is just going to go in there underneath our cavity tree. So any water comes down this tree on, onto the tree underneath the brick here, it's going to drop on top of the lead and out on top of the roof. Just quickly whiz along raking this joint out like this and that is this job done out of the way we'll then be moving on to the back we're having a bit problem coming over this existing brickwork it's just not working bricks uh, these new bricks are slightly bigger than the existing so we're having a bit problem with that so we're going to come up with a solution to that after we've done this while i'm doing that keegan's going to be on with the beam fill he's going to get them cuts all marked up cut and ready to lay we're going to get them in we're going to put two coarser blocks over the beam fill you want to come around here so we're going to put two coarser blocks over the beam fill down here so this is what keegan's doing he's going to measure this opening between and cut them we're going to lay them in there we'll come across the top up to around this height because it's very windy today so we don't want to be building much on there run them through we're going to come on to this back just do some low level work return this brickwork around here because this was part of the garage peak you can see on the house there where the roof was before so we're just going to build this part back up run it around square to the house and then set up our corner here and trace our bond through so we are losing our bond let's quickly show what we're looking for here if you want to come around here keegan we're going to line our brick up with the perp below so we're trying to keep bond with that we're just going to trace a bond through here already i'm forward to that perp below and that's only three bricks kind of losing it this existence really tight the perps anyway kind of governed by the front of the house as well because we've got a tooth into the house so the when you're standing back and you look you know you've got full bricks coming right across the house so you, you're governed from that you've got to run your brickwork bond across here and around here which is making this part difficult here if you look just directly down this joint there key with the camera you can show that the bond is being lost already See, we're getting up to quarter bond here now 
totally lost it there and we end up with a half in the end which is not good so half in the end we can't be having that so you could say well why don't you run that through to there for starters we don't have half bond see what i mean so we don't have half bond so we couldn't run that through to there and even if we did run that through to there and reverse this bond that would be wrong so we'd have a half up against the house inside of the two of them which would one be wrong two look ugly so we need to sort this out and it's got this stronghold in the room exactly it's just going to create a straight joint so if you have the half key you can see in there inside of the two of them it's not going to be a stronghold and, and he's right because if you just put a half in that two of them it's just going to be a straight joint so you may as well not two that out it's just going to be a half you, you're taking a half out to put a half back in so it wouldn't it just it's a waste of time and it would look horrible and it's wrong so this is what we need to do and I think the best way to do this is square up, build our corner, trace a bond through. And I don't like doing this, but putting cuts in. Three quarter cuts in to keep a bond with below. Don't want to do that. I didn't price for that. It's going to cost me time and money. That's what I think we may need to do. And with that said, we've got this yellow band of solia course, which goes right around the house, which is an opportunity to restart the bond. So if we look at this, building now there's going to be a band of solar course up here so looking from down below everything's going to look right if we put cuts in it's all going to look right up to that solar and then we can reset on top of the solar so we'll just run new brickwork a new bond across the top of the solar course so that it works with no cutting and we get rid of the cut so that is about it for that it's very difficult it's not straightforward it's not just put a profile on and lash away but we'll come up with the solution and we'll do it we've got our starters on cavity's been broken through we will have a nice tie in there same with the block work on the front obviously the front is toothed out so all of that said now we need to crack on Keegan's going to get this beam fill done i'm going to square this up and let's go look at this airplane <laughs> 